absolutely fabulous um, speakers. Very lucky to have them. Barry, do you want to switch on the on the recording? No, just, just oh, you have done. Brilliant. Cool. Um, we've got I'll, uh, before we start, I think I'll just mention what we've got coming up. So we've got this today Then in September, we've got a lightning talk session. So we've got a couple of people there already, but we really do need speakers. So this is a lovely, safe group of delivery managers, safe space for you to try out new things. If it's a first, if it's your first time doing something like this, lightning talk, we'd, we'd love to have you do that. So please do reach out to me and Barry if you'd like to be included in that uh, lightning talk. So we're talking about a seven minute sort of talk. So nothing, nothing too long and everybody's very, very friendly. Um, and we'll send out a mail or something to 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 you just to to shout out about that. And then we've got uh, Laura Burnett from Made Tech in October, and she's going to talk about discoveries, how to do um, really good discoveries, so practical stuff from the trenches. Um, and then yeah, November, December, we might do something a bit more interactive, a bit more getting you talking to each other. Um, so yeah, Lucy and Paul, let's just talk about, I think, so I got their book, um, Building Top Performing Teams, and I read it and I loved it. Like, look at how many post-it notes I've got in there. And I, so I, I approached them and said, look, would you come and do a talk for us? Um, because it's absolutely fabulous. Lots of really good theory backed up with practical real world stuff that, that I've used. So that's why we kind of got Paul and, and Lucy here today. Um, I'll put a feedback form in the chat, so we will ask for a really quick bit of feedback at the end of the session. So I'll I'll, I'll also do that. I'll put that in the chat. Um, but let's start as we as we usually do with these CrossGov sessions and invite anybody who it's your first time here just to unmute, say hello. My name's Steve, and I'm from the Department for Work and Pensions. Um, hello, everybody. Um, so. That that sort of thing. Does anybody is is it anybody's first time? Would they like to pop the video on or mute themselves and just say hello to the group? Hi, uh, Stephen. Hi, it's Colin in Newcastle. Yeah, uh, it's my I first think. time. That's so, how many people? Welcome. Welcome. Callum, you've got your hand up. Go for it. Uh, yeah. So hi, I'm Callum. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this is my first time in this particular community. I've uh, been in the civil service for a while, but I'm uh, I'm working at the Home Office now in uh, in the DSA Department uh, Data Services. Brilliant. Thanks, Carl. Sarah, you've got your hand up. Hi. Yeah, this is my first time. Um, I've already connected with Barry, who's going to come to us um, at Hackney Council and talk about um, how you set up your communities of practice. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to hearing what's going on today. Okay. Max, you've got your hand up. Oh. Yeah, hi, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Max, delivery manager at GDS, getting out of my coronavirus bunker and looking out to other places as well. Nice to meet you all. Cool, welcome, Max. Uh, Amol, is it Amol? Yes, it is. Um, hello, everyone. Um, previously, um, I was at, um, I have been to CrossGov delivery meetups before, but when I was at MOJ, hi Chris, I see you there as well. <laughs> we know um, each other from there. But now I'm over at DFE, where I'm. I've, it's my first week as a delivery manager here. So glad to be back in the Brilliant. delivery community. Thank you. Uh, Rosa is it Rosano? Sorry, I definitely uh, not uh, Yeah. Well. It's OK, it's Babat Sundar, so. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm Senior Project Manager at HSC. Uh, I used to be at PHE OXA, and I've just come to HSC in March. Thanks. Well, great to have you aboard. Um, Alison, I think you're next in the list. Hello, hello. Um, so I'm, I've been around digital for a long time. Um, but every time um, we had one of these meetings, it always clashed with one of the uh, ceremonies or another meeting. And, and I've just recently returned to work after just a little period of recovery from an operation. And I've gone into a new role and I'm determined that I'm turning up and these meetings aren't going to clash with anything. And it hit me oh, yeah. at the beginning. So it hit within our gift. 
to do that and it helpful that they're on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks Alison, nice to have you. Chris? Hi, uh, uh, yeah I've got, I think I've, I've been to the meetings before but I think I've said hello so I've um, used to work for HM Land Registry, I moved to um, Defence Digital part of Ministry of Defence a few months back and um, in their kind of fledgling what they call the digital foundry but it's for it's building their capability in building and maintaining digital services basically um, and I've become the head of delivery management in the last couple of months um, so um, I thought I'd join and say hello and I'm trying to encourage my fledgling delivery managers um, in the organization to be part of the wider government community brilliant. I think. Brilliant well we'd, we'd love to have your fledgling delivery managers Right, so without further ado, I can see Paul and Lucy just getting very anxious now going, oh God, he's eating into our time. Um, without further ado, let's let's pass over to uh, Lucy and Paul. I'm just Go checking, L Lucy, you're back, you're, you're back in again, yeah? <laughs> yes, I am, yeah. I, I haven't had that before, I've got to say. I got knocked out and um, uh, once we once had it where we were, had 500 on and Paul got a full power cut. So, um, uh, yes, yeah, so hopefully I'm not going to have any more problems. But anyway, a warm welcome to you all. Um, really lovely to be here. And, and actually, we're always so delighted to be talking about a subject that we're both really, really passionate about. Um, we've, I've been team coaching and coaching for like over 20 years. I, I absolutely believe in it fully i love it because i see it makes a real difference we were only yesterday paul and i with a board of a, a well-known organization and just the shift that that team have made is just so so encouraging so um yeah it, it's absolutely something we love to talk about so um so i think paul's going to just share the um paul do you want to just say hello and then we'll share the slide yeah yeah so um yeah hello i am Paul, I, I actually live in Northern Ireland, but today I'm working from London, so um, I work all over the place. But a, re a real pleasure to be here, and the joy of technology that we can we can we can dial in from anywhere. And it was lovely there to see at the start that those introductions. And one of the principles Lucy and I always talk about is connection before the work. So it's just lovely to see you just taking the time just to do that before you get into the session. So Stephen, so we're we're not anxious at all, but the fact that the time we think that's we think that's really really important. So the, the thank you, and we we always we always encourage that. We always encourage that. Absolutely. So thank you for that. So Paul, if you wouldn't mind just sharing our journey. I will do that now. We're just what we're going to do is just um, talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about. It's going to be a very practical session, very uh, interactive. We'll have some breakouts. Um, but in terms of what we're going to do uh, today, so um, first of all, actually, we talk about, as Paul just talked about, connecting before the work, which you've already started to do. So we're going to do some more connecting because we see it as a really key point of building top performing teams. We're going to ex uh, explain a little bit about, you know, what is team coaching? Because there's still a lot of confusion out there. I'm sure not with you guys, but but certainly for organisations there is. Um, so we'll share a bit more about what's team coaching. We're going to share with you a model for team coaching. Uh, called Creating the Team Edge, um, which our, our book's based on as well. And then we'll share a couple of tools um, that you can experience for yourself and then you could use um, either with your own team or with your work with teams. Um, and then some time for some, some questions. That's sort of where we're going. Um, and then we wanted to start with just connecting a bit more really with you. So I'm going to hand over to Paul and then we're going to um, find out some more about you. OK, so hopefully this will work. And if it doesn't, we'll do it the old school way, OK, using chat. But if, if you can see the screen there and basically just scan, probably the easiest way to go into Menti is on your phone and scanning the, the QR code on the right hand side of the screen. Or else just go to menti.com and enter in the code you can see in the screen there, um, 89368330. I'm just going to do it the same to make sure it's working OK. Um, and just a couple of questions we'd love to ask you. And so if you can't if you can't get in into Menti, um, we're okay to you know put put the answers to the questions in chat, and that will work as well. Okay, so hopefully that's enough time and for as many. Okay, so we've got a few people in Menti so far, have we? Okay, okay. Just gonna. Let's 
just going to switch over to the Menti here. One second. Theory, you should be seeing my Menti now, or should be coming very, very soon. Yeah. Just okay. Yeah, lovely. Okay, people have started already. So, what has brought you most joy this year? Um, somebody who was nice land. Okay, very, very jealous. I've never been there, so I want to go on the list. Yeah, I love it. Uh, a 40th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Brilliant. Oh. I'm married 22 years. 20. I can't actually remember. I'm going to get in trouble if I if I can't remember. See next year. <laughs> uh, my daughter getting in university. Lucy, you can speak with that one as well. Yeah, I had two sons graduate and then my daughter got to the university of her choice. So uh, she was over the moon, over the moon. So. Chocolate, muff <laughs> chocolate muffins. Yeah, yeah, oh, I can yeah. live with that one as well. Um, yeah, children's exam results brings a lot of uh, we had GCSEs arrive yesterday as well. So yeah, and AS, AS levels last week. So woodworking. Hmm, interesting. That's one I, I used to do that in school. And I haven't done it for about 30 years, so maybe maybe that'll prompt me to go back. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Having a good work-life balance. Yeah. yeah, I got one. I got one, a new apartment as well this year. Very good. Moving to a grown-up house. <laughs> Getting a promotion. Well done. Congratulations. Okay, and if you can't use the Menti, even just put it in chat. And Stephen, if you can see any any comments in chat for anybody who can't use the Menti, you can just. Happy for you just to call them out. Holiday, be... St. Lucia. I, I went to St. Lucia actually earlier this year. Yeah. I also said, Sun's moving at regional level. Congratulations. You know, the, the next question then. Should move on. Oh, went backwards. What are you deeply grateful for? What are you deeply grateful for? Lucy, if I was to ask you that question, I'm just waiting for the responses to come up, what would you say? Yeah, me, it's got to be family and close friends, really. I think um, I, I lost my father a couple of months ago and my mum two years ago, and it just, you know, it just brings it home even more, actually, how, you know, how important your time is with, with, with family and friends and making, you know, making the most of that. So, yeah, love to, love to make sure we spend time as a family together as well and um, whenever possible. If I can persuade mine to all come because they're older now, Persuade them to come on holiday with us, then um, I'm always very happy. What about you, Paul? Uh, I think it's been answered on the screen there. Um, between family and health, that mixture of family and health, is yeah. probably some. Yeah, it's probably the. Yeah, I, I, I find my times most days making little small micro choices about not to eat that extra muffin or not to eat that. Extra, just trying to think of long term health, which is always a fascinating journey. But um, but family for me probably is is is, is everything. I have three teenage daughters who are 15. 17 and 19 had, had to think about that and um yeah so that's probably the, the bit for me so lots of family here lots of health on the screen um yeah a purposeful job health peace of mind somebody else loyal friends yeah friends are really important too absolutely um great colleagues there you are family especially my 88 year old mother oh great friends um health after COVID recovery yeah my, my wife had COVID at the very very had COVID at the very very start of it all and it, it was a big, big thing for the family. So glad you've recovered from that. Um, Lovely. Very good. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, my wife and daughters. Thank you very much for sharing. I'm just going to close this down here and come back on to the. And, and it's not by coincidence that we are skewed to share because, you know, it, we, we find in top performing teams, actually, the deeper the connection in the teams, then, um, you know, the stronger the, the trust in the teams, the ability to have open and honest conversations. So, um, you know, we spend a lot of time with teams, getting them to connect, but not just at a surface level, at a deeper level as well, and really understanding more about each other. Absolutely. So, Paul, I think Absolutely. you were going to talk a little bit about what's team coaching? Yeah, so if I was to ask the question, what is team coaching, is, is a question I was to ask. And Lucy and I put a lot of effort into this here, and um, we were co-authoring the book, and we tried to say, well, you know, what is our definition of team coaching? We looked at all the academia for the last 15, 20 years, and come with our definition, we believe, is understandable in every everyday language. And my daughter, Carrie, which was 13 at the time, and we called it the Carrie test, where she had to read it and say that she understood it. So our, our definition of team coaching is, is on the screen there. Um, team coaching helps teams work together. So the first part is the word team. Is it actually a team? A lot of teams are teams and team, teams and name only. 
and they're more actually a group. They don't have a, a work product they're trying to produce together. So that's the first week, you know, working with intact teams. And then the word coaching, this idea that the whole coaching and the philosophy of coaching, you know, this reflective joint journey, this practice is behind it all. Helping teams work together with others within the wider environment. And some definitions use the word systemic in that. We, we avoided that word, but what we're talking about there is it's not enough to work with the team itself. It's working with the team, the teams that that team is connected to, and the teams that team is connected to in the wider environment. And we talk about team coaching creating lasting change. And that's about, it's not a one-off session. Generally, the work, if you ever do one-to-one -one coaching, you do a number of sessions. So in team coaching, we journey with the team over time. And this idea of developing safe and trusting relationships, we believe that's at the heart of it, this idea of psychological safety. Is, is that the people feel safe to take risk? And that doesn't mean a soft environment. It means that you can have open, and honest conversations. As Lucy said, we were with a team yesterday, and the level of conversations and the level of sharing about really difficult issues where people felt safe enough to say things that would remain on, usually remain unsaid in most organizations is what we're trying to do. But it's not just about that, it's about better ways of working and about new thinking. And better ways of working is, you know, explains itself, but new thinking is about this idea, you know. Any of you who have experienced one to one coaching, people come away sometimes that I feel transformed. Something's different within me. And we want that when we work with teams is that the team feels different. Something feels different. There's a, a light switch went off and everything feels a little bit different because of stuff that they've been doing together. And why do all that? We basically talk about maximizing collective potential, collective purpose and collective performance goals. And that's the reason we're doing it all for, for, for an end purpose. So that, that's our definition of team coaching. Um, and basically it's a uh, we believe it's, it's it's trying to help explain what is this thing team coaching that's been growing rapidly and is the fastest area right now of the coaching field right now globally and all of the main coaching bodies have developed competencies in the last few years which leads on to the next slide that lucy's going to explain thank you paul yeah so we wanted to share this uh, slide with you actually this has come from the international coach federation um, and we wanted to share it with you really briefly but just to give you a little bit of a context about how team coaching fits within the whole arena really of other types of team development. Um, so actually this came from when we were creating the global team coaching competencies and I was, I was very fortunate to be part of that. And we spent a lot of time debating. So what is team coaching? How does it differ from other different types of, of working with teams? Um, and then, um, you know, as an ICF uh, group, we came up with this table. So as you see on here, um, this sort of shows that team development is almost an umbrella term. And then within that sits a number of different types of uh, team development. So team building, for example, often a series of sort of one off type events, um, you know, often about maybe about interpersonal relationships um, as opposed to team coaching that Paul's just talked about, which tends to be a series of interventions where work happens in between as well. Um, where the team are embedding the changes and really making sure that um, they're taking the actions, they're making those commitments um, and making progress and then coming back to further interventions. So um, I won't go through them all, but it just gives you a little bit of a flavour of, of how team coaching differs from other types of team intervention. And you'll all be really familiar with lots of different types of team intervention and knowing the work that you do. So hopefully it gives you a little bit of a flavour and then we wanted to share with you um, a, a model for team coaching. So um, really from leading and working with teams for like over 25 years, both of us have led large teams as well. Um, we did some really deep research into what were the characteristics of, you know, high performing and top performing teams. Um, and we discovered seven key characteristics um, and then we, we developed them way further and went much deeper in our book. So we wrote 85,000 words about these seven characteristics um, predominantly and, and we're going to share with you in about two or three minutes. So it's you make, very, a, you make a sound, you make it sound very easy, Lucy, the way you just said that 85,000 words so quickly. <laughs> we just did it. We just did it. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, we're going to share with you literally in a few minutes. So it's really top line, uh, but I hope you give you a bit of a flavour of some of those characteristics. Um, and the idea is this is not a linear, so it's not you have to do one than the other. Um, the idea is all of those seven characters to play a part in, in high performing, top performing teams. So I'll briefly talk about them um, and then we're going to get into um, exploring and using a couple of tools with you. So the first one is about purpose. Um, so, you know, many of you will know, so purpose is about why the team exists. What is it the work that this team can only do together that they can't do apart? 
and then purpose will link to strategy and goals uh, as well for that team. Um, then identity is about how does the team want to be known? How do they want to be described? Um, you know, within the organisation by other teams and, and for themselves, how do they want to be known? How do they want to be described? Values and beliefs. So what does the team need to value and believe in in order to achieve that purpose? Uh, and awareness is at sort of three levels and we're going to explore a bit around awareness in a moment. But awareness is at first of all a systemic level. So very much about, you know, how does the team interface within its wider system and ecosystem, you know, within the organisation, with other partners that they might um, connect with in other organisations and with stakeholders as well. And then, you know, within the team itself, um, how does the team really know and understand what are the strengths within the team, what are the preferences within the team, um, and how do they know how to leverage those? And then also how the team's connecting with other teams within the organisation. So there's sort of a, a lot there within awareness. Um, relatedness then is about that connection, it's about that level of trust, it's about that ability for the team to have open and honest and robust conversations. Ways of working is about the processes, the rhythms of the team. So their ability to make effective decisions, their meeting structure. Um, and then finally, last but not least, um, is transformation. So this is about how the team continues to learn, to grow, to innovate. You know, it's about how resilient the team is um, and how, how much energy the team has as well. Um, and then how the team really starts to learn from each other for their own benefit. So a really brief overview. I'm going to give you an opportunity now to sort of bring it to life a bit um, and get you to have, have a think about those seven characteristics. So I'm going to pass to Paul. OK, so one, one of those are we call team awareness, Lucy just mentioned. And before Lisa and I work with the team, what we tend to do is basically one to one interviews with all the team members and with key stakeholders it might be and other people maybe who report into the team or clients from outside the team or other other parts of the organization. And then we, we'd often do a diagnostic and we've created one that we have um, called creating a team edge. It's 42 questions and then a lot of verbatim. So we're going to we're just going to show you here seven questions and um, not, not 42 over here all day. So seven of the questions um, and what we want you to do basically just for a team that you right now that you're in or one that you work with, we'd like you to answer these questions. Just do it on, on a blank piece of paper. And if you write down one, if you strongly disagree, and 10, if you strongly agree. So one of us low and 10 of us high. And then we're going to ask you to do an exercise of sharing exercise afterwards based on your answers. OK, so the first question is, I'm going to read them, read down through them slowly. And as, as I read each one, if you just answer, you know, one strongly disagree or, or 10 strongly agree. And this could be a current team or a team from the past or a team that you're working with. My team has a clear and compelling purpose with objectives aligned to that purpose. My team has a clear and compelling purpose with objectives aligned, aligned to that purpose. Second question. My team has a unique character and personality that the team is proud to identify with. My team has a unique character and personality that the team is proud to identify with. And you can probably tell the first question is from the purpose section. The second question is from the, the identity section. We, we have seven questions per section. We're just going to show you one at this point. Or six questions per section. Third question then. My team's values and beliefs shine through in all its work projects. My team's values and beliefs shine through in all its works projects. And we talk about values as, as you know how you behave, your behaviors, how you turn up. OK. So the fourth question. My team understands each other's personal preferences and working styles in depth. My team understands each other's personal preferences and working styles in depth. Lucy and I have spent a lot of time getting used to each other's working styles and we, we make adjustments for that and challenge each other because we, because we know that because we know that. The fifth question. My team's relationships are built on trust. They're open and honest with each other. We find this is one that people really struggle with that, you know, 
by not having open and honest conversations. So my team's relationships are built on trust. We are open and honest with each other. Sixth question then. My team is known for the effectiveness of its meetings. They are thought provoking, engaging. And right now, Lucy, your image is covering the words. So I can't see them. Can you read out the rest of that? Oh, sorry. Why? Yeah, like, no, no, so you, you, can't, you, you can't change it. It's just the way Teams is working. Yeah, so it's, um, my, my team is known for the effectiveness of its meetings. They are thought provoking, uh, engaging, and always result in a clear set of actions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. And the last question to reflect on. Again, I can't read all of this too, Lucy. Can I ask you to read it again because it's covering up some yeah. of it? My team frequently gets together to identify new ways it can grow and sustain its development. That last one is from the transformation. So the first one is purpose, second one's from identity, third one values and belief, and um, the fourth one is um, ways of working, fifth one relationships, and then um oh, sorry, got that wrong. Personal preferences got that wrong this evening. The last one is about transformation, and the one before that is about um, ways of working. Okay, I haven't missed one out there. Yes. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you've all been able to answer all of those there, and I've got a a number between one and ten for whatever team you're thinking of, and we're going to use that information now for this next section. Okay, Lucy, do you want to? Yeah, sure. So, um. So we'd like you first of all to share in chat. I don't know, Stephen, are you OK to be able to see chat? So I think we can. Yep, I can see that. Yep. Oh, fabulous. So first of all, we'd just like you to share in chat. So, you know, from those, what were the areas of strength that came out? And then maybe areas to work on. If you could sort of say whether there are strengths or an area to work on, that would be brilliant. So we're just going to get a bit of a flavour first of all, and then we're going to move into a really short breakout in pairs and um, just for around four minutes, just to share um, some of the outcomes and we'll give you a little bit of a brief uh, what to think about and those uh, those breakouts. But uh, so first of all, if you can just share in chat. So how did you what came out for you? What were the areas of strength? What were the areas to work on? First comment, seniors saying, I don't know. Oh, OK, so is that OK? People don't, you, you know, the team that you're working with doesn't, doesn't wouldn't know what those are or? That's from Sarah. Bruce has put taking the time to know each other and how we work. Max has put strengths, good respect for others across the team, slash giving space areas to improve, treating difference of opinion and creative conflict as a good thing. Make it okay to disagree. Tony's put strength, clear purpose. Okay. Good. Some more. You see something Compelling up purpose. <laughs> Another one for compelling purpose from Chike, I think. Uh, That's great to hear. It sounds like you you do a lot of work around purpose. That's brilliant. Silly. Bev has said purpose as well as a strength. Work on character slash values and beliefs. Rich has put team I work with often can really struggle with letting their guard down in terms of having an authentic conversation and making real connection. Mike Jones strength trust to get the job done. Sarah's to work on setting boundaries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't think I'm working with one team in any organisation that's not trying to build those open and honest conversations um, and those robust conversations. So, um, OK, we've got some more pinging up, I think, have we, Stephen? You can hear the wee noise just pinging so we can't. Yeah. yeah, they're really coming in. I can't keep up with them. Alison, <laughs> positive, honest and strong team, regularly reviewing, negative. Scope was not nailed down and therefore sometimes on a different page. David, weakness, purpose. I have just taken over the team and this is something I've identified quickly, made my main objective to resolve. Um, Thank you for sharing that. We're going to do a bit of work on purpose shortly, so that'll be helpful, yeah. hopefully. Um, 
thank you. Lots, lots, lots of great stuff there. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. It's um what, what we're going to do now. We're going to actually put you in the breakout groups. But what I'd like you to do is basically to share the outcomes with you're going to be in, 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 in pairings of two for four minutes. So it's very, very short. So literally you've got a minute to say hello to each other and if you don't know each other, just to acquaint, acquaint with each other. And then basically like a minute and a half each just to share basically what are the outcomes of that exercise? So what was the strength? What was the area to work on? But importantly, just to pick, just to pick, you know, something you can you can potentially do that, you know, um, just to pick a, pick something you can, you can focus on in that regard. OK, so share the outcomes, explore one action to either leverage the strength or maybe work on an improvement area. And one, one of the things we're always very clear on working with teams is like we can be very hard on ourselves, but let, let's try and build on our strengths as well rather than always being hard on ourselves. So either building a strength or to work on an improvement or just take, take of one one action and just share that with each other. So I think Barry, you're going to open the breakout rooms, I think, as far as I know. Maybe you want to have a go in this. We could just share here. This section. Wait, anyone feel comfortable to share? I, I mean, I won't share because it's more about you guys sharing. I can. <laughs> who, 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 who wants to share? Who feels comfortable to share? Back as well. So anyone happy to share what came out for them in terms of other strengths or an area to work on? From you, Alison. I, I dropped out because I'm, I'm in a room on my own. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, welcome back. We're just we're just sort of doing a group share if anyone's happy to. I'm happy to go first. Room 20 has only got one person in apparently, Barry. Yeah. Um. You go. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um. Yeah. Like one of the areas. I mean, there's there's a few, like three that I really need to work on. I think, but one of them is values and beliefs. Um. Right. And I, it was interesting because before I, uh, went away on a long holiday, uh, we did an exercise where there were values around a room, and we got everybody to go around and think like, what are the values they want to see in others? I mean, so we did that exercise, but then it was dropped since going away so that was about two months ago now and so like that momentum wasn't kind of kept up and so I'm wondering now how do I reinvigorate that conversation to get things started again and how do we live and breathe those values in our day-to-day -day? and it's that's the kind of the question I have yeah yeah any any I mean I can ask that but I don't, any any others got other thoughts about that and I think I went through something similar in my so I I'm I've started on a new job this week um and was starting from more or less scratch so it it it's a great opportunity. But in the in the previous role it was um new people coming together all the time and we'd pick up momentum and get so far and then like like you said it hit Vita that then it would drop off slightly. Um, so we, we had a few cycles of that. And the only way I could pick it up was just keep readdressing it at retros. Um, and the same signal was coming out from others at a retro as well. So that was then the sort of I've got the buy-in then to keep, keep it going. It was never perfect, um, but it it was how we could reinvigorate and we we ended up doing it a, a bit more face to face to we were all over different locations i don't know if that's your your experience we're in different offices yeah so yeah yeah no i Thank think it's a great idea i mean that's almost what we do with team coaching when we're working with teams so say that, for example they'll do some work you know talking about their values we'll then talk about okay so what behaviors would you be seeking being in the team then that would it would show that you were um you know fulfilling those values or you were living to those values so we would get them to articulate that and then talk about and and then so how would you know that what are you going to see well how are you going to check in with each other um and then sometimes you know teams have sort of decided to do like an observer role maybe in a meeting and then someone feeds back or um but just those like Alison talked about almost those check and balances along the way you know to a, a board that I'm on you know we sort of stop actually like halfway through and just say 
let's let's be honest now how where are we how are we living up to those those behaviors that we've talked about you know and people often say yeah we've been supported but have we really challenged each other you know so anything like that i think can help so i'm i'm all i'm all i was just gonna uh, yeah i was just gonna add to that because it sounds a bit cheesy but sometimes it can be quite easy to sort of miss the wood for the trees um, when you're working to deadlines. So when you when you bring in things like values and um, motivations for a team, uh, it can be quick to just boil down to, well, my motivation for doing this work is that we need to meet this deadline. We need to finish this part, this um, ticket or this issue. And that's really it. Um, but to have those kind of regular check ins, as you mentioned, with the checks and balances, it's good to just take a step to remind yourself as a team together why you're pulling together for this effort, like why you're doing this. Um, but that that I I think it's easy to kind of just miss or gloss over, but it, it can be helpful to do that maybe. Yeah, thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Shay. Looks like Paul's back. So have, have our breakouts closed, Barry? No, not yet. If you do you want to bring everyone back? I think it was just sort of four minutes, wasn't it? Paul, you're on mute. We we thought we'd lost you, uh, Barry. So uh, we we left our breakout room and then came come back this way because uh, we'd gone way over four minutes. All right. Okay. Can you well, hear me tonight? Okay. Is it? Sorry. Can you hear me tonight? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have the full team's control of setting the times and. I also don't have the close all rooms button for some reason. Okay. I normally have. So I'm just going through closing them all individually. Oh, thank you, Barry. Much appreciated. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I think we'll not do the second breakout room. I actually ended up in a room by myself and then I had to, had to leave it. So <laughs> it's okay. It's, the joys of technology. The joys of technology. I know. I know. Cool. Well, welcome back. I hope you had some, some good conversations. Um, those of you, we, we had a bit of a, a, a wider group conversation in the main room so uh, for those of us that ended up back in here so um so good to see you all back oh, okay cool uh, so the next area we're going to sort so we've started to look at team team awareness obviously you've done those questions and you hopefully some of you have started to have some conversations around you know what were some of those strengths you might be able to leverage or areas that you might want to work on um and what was great was when you saw in chat there were differences so some people you know some people in teams purpose was a strength in others it was an area to work on so it's an opportunity to learn from each other um but a purpose is a really key area in terms of the characteristics um you know and the more um it's really in, good <laughs> sorry oh oh sorry <laughs> so you know the more an individual's purpose obviously connects to the team or the organization's purpose the more connected they will feel i'm sure many of you think about it. and many of you have probably heard the story of JFK when he was visiting um, NASA and he, he asked the cleaner, and the janitor, you know, what do you do here? And, and they said, oh, you know, I, I help put a man on the moon. I'm sure many, many of you heard that story. But, you know, it's that almost that connection to something bigger and a really a heartfelt connection as well. So we do a lot of work with teams to really help them to get that connection. You know, you know why are they doing what they're doing as a team? You know, ultimately, what's that that heart connection um, that they're going to get from that? Um, and often to do that, a first step is then to help them to understand or start to explore what's their individual purpose first and then move on to exploring what's the team purpose. So we're going to just do a little bit to first we get you to think about your individual purpose and then your team purpose. Uh, so the first piece here is we're going to put up a whole series of images. Um, or you can just choose something from your phone, um, whatever's easier. But um, there's some images here and we'd like you to choose um, something that, that speaks to, that represents your personal purpose. And, and we're not expecting you to come up with some you know, amazing sentence right now in a couple of minutes. It's just sort of thinking about the essence of your purpose. Um, so just choose an image or grab something off your phone or you might even have a something around you that you think that speaks to your purpose anything anything goes um so we'd like you to do that first of all 
So while people, what, 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 people do, yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, would you like to, to share what you choose? Yeah, probably for me, um, I'm surrounded here with my all my all my kids stuff here, whatever. Like, but basically, um, for me, it's my children, and I, I come from Northern Ireland. Basically, I grew up during the Troubles, and I lived in a quite a tough area. And for me, basically, all the one thing that drives me more than anything else is just leaving the place that I love a little, a little bit better for my kids than it was when I was growing up. And that's my 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 deep. And I, I think we could have multiple purposes. But that's probably at the core of who I am. So the whole idea of helping people collaborate better um, for the purpose of my of my kids and the next generation is what really, really drives me and, I, and um, makes me do the work that I do. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for sharing. Great. I was going to say, Lucy, if people want to share and chat, if they wanted to share what, what you know, if, if they feel comfortable to, rather than doing a breakout room, that's okay. Yeah, because yeah, I don't know, will we have time for a breakout room? I don't think so, Lucy. I don't think so. Okay, we're about five minutes over there in the last bit. Okay. okay. So yeah, if people want to share in, in chat or we'll hold up and we hear from a couple of people, um, yep, anyone happy absolutely. to share, share a little bit around their individual purpose? One or two who might like to share something, what they chose or just say what, what uh, picture they chose. I'll, I'll go. Um, so I the picture that jumped out of me was my dad's purpose in the bottom right hand corner is a racehorse called frankel and he would talk for hours about that racehorse and that train and what happened so that was a, that was something that jumped out of me and sparked a little bit of emotion for me oh thank you Stephen. lovely and i think this one else had their hand up was it callum did oh, i see sorry yeah that was me um, yeah, I think my eyes were drawn to the, the bottom left, actually, because um, well, I, I can't see it very clearly from here, but it looks like somebody popped visiting some ancient site on a mountain, maybe Machu Picchu or something like that. But um, yeah, I think I'm I'm quite restless. You know, I'm the sort of person I'd never go. I never want to go back to the same place twice on holiday. Basically, I'm always wanting to explore new things and go to different places and experience different things. So, yeah, that's my purpose, I think. Lovely. Yeah, I'm with you. I like, like new experiences. Thank you, Callum, for sharing that. And so, Stephen, what are we seeing on the chat? So we've got Dan's put a lovely picture of him swimming what looks like in the channel. And he's put keep ah. swimming plus being part of a supportive team. Tony's put an image of, I think it's a turtle swimming in the sea. Uh, Nahida, sorry if I've if I've got that name wrong again. Uh, happy teams are productive teams and a quote shared with me during the Commonwealth Games is the following. People will forget what you said or did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Um, and then Rick, I don't know how to describe this gift. He's put what appears to be like a, a massive wheelie bin in a, a, on fire floating in a sea. Wow. 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 Thank you. Gosh, thank you all for sharing. Brilliant. Absolutely. So we've got gonna, some... Go on. I'm just going to move on just to, to team purpose then. And um, this idea of um, thinking about team purpose. So when Lucy and I work with teams, what we do effectively is we always get them to focus on their personal purpose, first of all. And again, it's a very good exercise for getting people to really, really connect with each other at a very deep level when they start connecting to the, their deeper personal purpose. And th this idea of a team purpose is like, you know, why do you exist as a team? So, Lucy, I don't know if you can remember offhand our team purpose when we wrote the book. Um, I'm going to try and quote it here. <laughs> um, to help teams within and across organisations to collaborate better, to create meaningful and lasting change. Yeah. Is that, is that right? Yeah. It is. And w when we were writing the book, there was many a, many a dark moment whereby, you know, you had a chapter deadline, you were behind, you were like, can we do this sort of stuff? And that 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 deeper purpose of really wanting to make a difference in the world helping teams to collaborate better within the cross organizations that drove us on. So what, what we'd love just in the chat, if you, some of you could just share that, what do you think the essence is, the why behind your team's purpose? So the team that you're a part of, you know, not, not what you're trying to do, but why is it you're doing what you're doing? Um, and we'd love to see some examples of that. Is there any other examples of team purpose to come to mind that you think, ah, that was an amazing one? Um, so I had one, yeah, which is in, in media, well-known, um, 
very very big well-known media organization and um they they put on natural history programs and uh, theirs was to um bring a voice to the natural world so i loved that yeah. um and I was doing work with a big, thank, thank you Lucy, and I was doing work with a big massive um, global company, IT company, and basically the data, the, the, the senior team in charge of data, and I can't remember the exact purpose, but they had in their purpose statement this idea of nurturing data. I just love that, like, you know, because we talk about, um, you know, purpose should be, it should pull the heartstrings, it should be, it should be really, really consequential, it should be important, and um, nurturing data, and they were so excited about this idea of nurturing data and getting others in the company and the organisation excited about nurturing data. So any, any examples of purpose or the essence of your purpose? Just some of the thoughts in, in chat. We'd love to hear. I know Stephen and Barry, if you can see any there, come in the chat. Got one from Vita. To make it easier for pupils and schools to take slash do primary school assessments. Tony, reduce DWPs, GHG emissions from IT to support net zero. Wow. Good. Yeah, good right stuff, there. yeah. Phenomenal. They are really good. Any, any that you don't have to say, you know, don't have to be crafted statements. Just any, any sort of essences. There's some more beep in there now as well. On data, I was on a previous time where Datasaurus Rex was our team mascot, and our mission <laughs> was to crunch data. Oh, I very mean good. that's lovely. Good. Love very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah get payments which help families raise their children i mean big one there yeah yeah well that, that that's just like that's just like that that gets me emotional <laughs> so that's okay yeah, so yeah, yeah so and the more you can tap into that the more your your your, your purpose is actually something really meaningful and consequential and it doesn't matter what your work is you, you usually find something that you know some work can be really meaningful but there's great research from um it was um, hospital cleaning staff and the staff who believed that their their job was about um, hygiene and saving lives, performed better, were happier and are more creative. So no matter what job you're in, if you can tap in the deeper purpose behind that job, people perform better and this is the same for teams as well. Yeah, I think that research with Dutton, wasn't it? In yes, I think you're right. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of research. Oh, lower emissions. So it's more popping up here, Stephen, aren't they? Remediate the DWP small systems to low code, which in turn will reduce costs. And then Tony's built on it lovely and said and lower emissions. Sarah's put to provide yeah. and secure a stable cloud infrastructure so that citizens can rely and slash trust in our services. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Thank you all for sharing that. That's phenomenal. Yeah, so you can see there we've just covered two areas that are seven. Uh, you know, we just tapped into awareness for some questions. And tapped into purpose, and there's another five areas that we haven't even touched on. And um, you can see how, how much there is, how much work there is to do in this area, and, and how how deep you can go quite quickly with, with this work. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, we're just we're going to move into sort of getting a few minutes with some questions. Um, but as as we said, you know, we've uh, written a book on building top performer teams. Anyone interested in the book? Um, uh, or developing as a team coach, then please do contact us either you know, via messaging via LinkedIn or here's our emails as well. Um, and um, or we can get you discount codes as well for the for the book so we can uh, share those with you. But um, really, it's over to any final questions. We've probably got time for a couple of questions if anyone's got any questions. Yeah, just because please reach out to us on LinkedIn as well or by email. Just just please say hello. We're always willing to say hello and chat to people as well. So afterwards. Any questions? Anyone want to come off and off mic and ask any questions? Any? We always get questions about the difference between team coaching and the other types of team intervention or any, anything at all. Oh, Max. Max has got Max. a question. Thanks. Can't see just yet, not yet. Oh, I meant to do the classic thing of not being unmuted. Can you hear <laughs> me now? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I just perfectly, Max. Perfectly. Bro, um, I was going to ask about yeah, how does talking about mission and purpose track across different cultures in the literature and your experience? Are there any sort of um, 
ways that it plays out different, say in like the UK versus other places. Lucy, do you want to? I don't. I don't mind. Do you want to? I think. Sorry, I'm struggling to this hear is, that completely. This 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 idea of of how does purpose and mission play across cultures? And I think my, my own thinking is we we work internationally and um we we tap into this thing about deeper purpose across the globe. And it's you know and I I think. You think back to what are deeper human needs and people's purpose might be a little bit different for different countries, maybe different things that are valued more. But that idea of purpose, um, you know, why we exist, why a team exists is, is, a, is, a, is a human phenomenon. It's, it's not a it's not a cultural phenomenon. It might turn up different in different cultures, but and there's not much written about it from a cultural point of view. I haven't seen much research written about in literature about that. So if you come across anything, Max, not I'd love to see it, but I haven't come across any literature regarding it, you know, differing by, by culture. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose I, I definitely see the difference in different organisations. So, you know, in a lot of organisations that are, are very um, results operationally focused is sometimes it might take a bit longer to help them to connect into that deeper purpose. Yeah. Um, but it is there. It is there. Um, it just might take a bit longer. So, um, you know, so, some some organisations that are pur very purpose driven will get their team purpose in a very short period of time. But others, it, it, you know, it can take longer to develop. As Paul and I know, when we were developing yep. our own purpose, so. Yep. Um, so uh, Stephen, were there other questions in chat? Yeah, we've got people saying, look, I need to go. Oh, okay. um, and lots of people just saying, thank you. you. <laughs> um, so, and Nahida said, I'm borrowing that team exercise at the start using Menti. Okay. Oh, yeah, if, work, work, work away. Yeah, definitely. Use definitely. anything that you see today. We're very happy. Obviously, if you use if you use our uh, the model, then if you could just uh, you know min mention performance edge and the the uh, just yeah the, the two, 2015. But apart from that, you can use anything. So um, cool. Dan's got a question but, there in the chat. But Dan, anybody who's leaving, out. anybody who's leaving, bye bye and thank you for coming along. But we, we're all okay to stay for another few minutes for any other questions. So okay. I think Stephen, you said. Uh, was it John had a question? Dan, Dan, he's got to stand me. up with Dan. Go, yep, go for it, that's go for me. It. So yeah, any tips for team coaching remotely? Because that's the way life has, has gone in the last few years, a lot more remote. Um, is there any tips that you would give about how to do team coaching like that that's not Mentimeter? Because I've already got that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Use Zoom, Dan, use Zoom. Sorry, I know you can't probably from a government, but basically we find the breakout rooms a lot easier to use in Zoom. And if you can prevent, get to that, but if you can't, then you do the best you can with teams. But breakout rooms, breakout rooms, breakout rooms, you know, all the time. Um, people people going on walks, doing exercises and prayers, go for a walk, go away for half an hour, peer coaching each other, but just make it very, very interactive. And, um, you know, you can, we, you can do amazing work in this virtual space if you just think about it differently. And ask people, what do you want? What do you want? What will make this a really good session? What what will make this? And people ask for lots of mini breaks. And we, we, we always let people just put up their hands and say, listen, can we have a three minute break now, please? And we go, yep, cool. So just res respecting people's needs uh, and just going with that. Is, um, and, and people generally, we, we do a particular program we work on and there could be three eight hour days online and it works. <laughs>